Today on this 2015 Nissan Rogue, we're going to review and install the Kurt T Connector Vehicle Wiring Harness with a four pole flat trailer connector, part number C56033. Now, when our wire harness is installed, we'll go ahead and show you how to use it. When it's not being used, of course, it resides in the compartment here. We need to use it, pull it out, put the compartment back into place, and outside. Then shut the hatch on it. The door seal is thick enough, it won't hurt anything when you shut the hatch. Just make sure you stay away from the latch here, otherwise you'll pinch the wire and you'll be starting all over again. We'll go ahead and shut the hatch on it. And you can see you got plenty of wire going down to our trailer. And of course, when we're not using it, we'll open up the trunk, put it back into the compartment. This way it's sitting inside and it's protected from the elements when it's not being used. With this part number, this is what you get. First off, this whole assembly right here is the wire harness. We'll go ahead in a little more detail. It has a four pole end with a cover. It has nice long length of four pole wire. This is our module right here. This takes battery power and copies the signal from the vehicle from these wires here. Our green wire will go over to our passenger side. And our T connector with the yellow wire will go over to the driver's side. A couple little extra wires. One wire with the ring terminal will go to ground, basically the sheet metal on the vehicle. And then our black wire here goes to our 12 volt power supply. This will go up towards the battery. And to do that, it comes with a length of wire to go up there. Also, this uh, fuse holder to connect up to the battery. This also comes with a small parts package with a fuse for a fuse holder, some butt connectors, a ring terminal, a ground screw, and adhesive for the module and some zip ties. Now this is designed for trailers in a typical situation where it has two tail lights in the back and a couple of running lights on the side. To start off our install, we need to go ahead and remove all the floor coverings, get down to the spare tire. We also need to remove the threshold. We'll have to go ahead and remove an inside panel here and these whole panels, we have to loosen them to get access to the inside. On our threshold or scuff panel, We'll go ahead and pop this little cover loose using a flat blade screwdriver. We'll also pull back the edge of the seal just a little bit. And there'll be two push pin fasteners we have to remove. One located here and here. So we'll need a flat blade screwdriver to pull out the centers. There's usually a little slot that we can put the screwdriver into and pop out the center. Once the center is popped out, you can pull out the rest. All right, now I'm going to use a trim panel tool to pop loose the fasteners underneath here. I'm using a metal one, but you can also use a plastic pry bar as well. Oops. Then we just go ahead and pop it loose from there. There's some snaps on the side here and also on the bottom to kind of work loose. Let's go ahead and work on our side panel now. We'll go ahead and pull the seal out just a little bit more. We're looking at the driver's side. I'm going to go ahead and get this little tray out of the way. This panel. And next we'll go ahead and loosen up this tie-down point. Pop the metal part up. And using a flat blade screwdriver one more time. We'll pop loose the plastic cover. We'll go ahead and remove it using a 10 millimeter socket. Now after we remove this one, we're going to repeat the same process for the one that's up towards the front behind the back seat. Now we'll go ahead and remove a fastener that's behind this panel here. There's a little small circle, one here and here. Once again, we'll use a small screwdriver, pop out the cover. And then we'll go ahead and remove that bolt with a 10 millimeter socket as well. Now we'll go ahead and pull our panel loose. There's a few more snap fasteners behind here. We'll have to unsnap it from this top edge as well. So it's gently pulling on it to work it loose. There it is. Okay. We just want enough working room like this. Now I'm gonna repeat this same process 
over on the passenger side. Only a couple little details on our passenger side. There's a wire harness going to here and to our light here. We'll just disconnect those just to get them out of the way and we'll put them, out, put them back when we're done. Just push it in a small tab and then it comes apart. Same thing on top here. Push in a tab on the outside and pull down on the connector and it comes apart. At this point, we're ready to install a wire harness. Starting on the driver's side, this is where we're gonna hook up our T connectors. We'll push down a small white tab here and pull it apart and put our T connector in between two halves. These connectors are gonna be identical to the ones on our wire harness, so you can get an idea how they work before you put it in. So I'm gonna start off by routing this behind my panel. And we'll connect everything up. You want to push them together to make a nice click sound. Next, we'll go ahead and take our T connector to the green wire. And we're going to run that over to the other side. And that's going to hook up behind our panel in roughly this area right here, following the sheet metal. It's a little bit different from the other side, plus, it's really hard to see. Maybe go by feel on this one since you can't really pull the panel all the way off. Now, what we can do to make things a little bit easier. Just pop it loose in the wall. You may have to use a trim panel tool to loosen it up. And then you can bring it out and that's easier to work with. And we'll go ahead and install a T connector in the same fashion we did on the driver's side. And our connection's made on our passenger side. Now we're going to take the wires we disconnected earlier and put them back into place. And we can go ahead and take our panel and pop it back into place. Now we'll go ahead and turn our attention back to our module and our black wire. We'll go ahead and twist the wires together, make sure it's nice and tight. We'll add a buck connector that comes with the kit. So go ahead and crimp it down. Then we'll take a length of black wire, strip it back and put it to the buck connector. Once we have our, our connection made, we'll take our extra wire, run it eventually underneath the plastic or alongside the edge, and we'll run it into this grommet right here. And then we'll run it right through. What works best is a pocket knife. We'll just poke a hole in it. Then we'll run our wire through and out the bottom. We'll get as much as we can down in there. Now, our, our, here's our wire right here. And the actual grommet's above the rear subframe on our vehicle. And we'll just go ahead and just pull it out and take up all our excess. Once we take up all our excess, we'll just leave this alone for now. And then we'll go back to the interior of the vehicle. Now let's go ahead and work with attaching our module. We'll go ahead and clean this off and our location that we're going to mount this. Right next to our wire harness. We'll go ahead and add our adhesive first. Route this underneath our panel and to our location. Right, next, we'll go ahead and take a moment. It might be a good idea to go ahead and zip tie our wires together with the factory wire harness here to help keep it from moving around. Next, we'll go ahead and work for a white wire at the ring terminal. I'm going to go to the sheet metal right here using the self tapping screw provided. We'll need a quarter inch hex bit to install the screw. I'm going to go ahead and run the screw in first and then attach my wire. Now we can go ahead and put our panel back into place. Let's we'll go ahead and snap it back in and we'll save the fasteners for last, just like we did on the other side. Our power wire going towards the front, we can simply just tuck this up and out of the way. We want to make sure we have easy access to our four pole wire. So for now, I'm just going to keep it with the spare tire. In our green wire, we need to bundle up and make sure it doesn't get pinched when the panel goes back into place. I think I'm just going to tuck it behind the panel as well. And then for here, I'm just going to go ahead and just tape this up using some packing tape just to hold the wire up and out of the way when we put our threshold back in. Once the threshold's in place, it'll help hold the wire down. Okay, now I'll go ahead and put our threshold back into place. We'll leave our fasteners alone for now. Next, we'll go ahead and take our black wire and run up towards the front of the vehicle. 
We want to stay away from anything moving like suspension components or anything hot like the exhaust as we go up into the engine compartment. We'll go ahead and show you how I route our wire. Coming over the rear suspension, ran it through the brake line to help hold it up. And then down to the parking brake cable where I zip tied it in a couple of places. Went forward and ran it through the shield right here. Then it came out to this section of the frame here where the body work. Basically, I just threaded it through every little hole. I pulled it out and then I routed it back in like I have this loop right here. Then I just pulled it on through the next hole. Just worked my way forward. And then I'll use a pull wire to help drag this up towards the top. Now, this is my pull wire. This is an old piece of airline tubing, but this also could be any piece of material that you can use to route down next to the firewall and out the bottom. And then eventually we'll run our wire back up to a positive side of the battery. So I'm just going to go ahead and connect my wire to my pull wire and we'll go ahead and route it up towards the top. Once we took up all our slack, it's a good idea to verify it's ran the way you want to. Then we'll go ahead and zip tie this wire harness right here. We'll cut our wire to length up to our battery and cut off our excess. And then we'll add our fuse holder. We'll strip our wire back. We'll add a buck connector to it first. And the other side, we'll get our ring terminals provided. We'll also protect our connection points with some electrical tape. Next, we'll go ahead and add it to our terminal. I'm actually gonna loosen up this nut right here and we'll apply our ring terminal to that. We'll use a 12 millimeter socket on this fastener. Remove the nut, add the ring terminal, and reinstall the nut. Put the cap back in place. You may have to do some trimming on the inside to make it fit, but I think we're okay in this case. Okay, now we can go ahead and add the 10 amp fuse to the fuse holder. And then we can go ahead and try out our wire harness to verify it works. I'm gonna plug mine into it and we'll try it out. Now the tester I'm using is part number F5CT from Brophy. Now we'll go ahead and try it out. We'll go ahead and check out the running light circuit, our left turn signal, our right turn signal, and our brake signal. Once we made sure everything's working just fine, we can go ahead and continue on by reinstalling the rest of our panels and also all the fasteners and the floor covering. And maybe a touch up on the wires to zip tie them to keep them safe and secure and out of the way. Go ahead and put a floor covering in. We're going to take our four pole wire harness. Make sure it comes over the top. We'll run it through a little notch right there. And we'll continue with the rest of our coverings. And now finish it for our Kurt T Connector Vehicle Wiring Harness, part number C56033, on this 2015 Nissan Rogue.